Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Solid Rock. Praise the Lord. Doing things a little different this morning. Uh, we're doing. We're not doing in-person church today. Uh, we've had some folks uh, fighting some sicknesses here in the past couple of weeks. Uh, fortunately, no one directly has tested positive for the coronavirus. Uh, but out of an abundance of caution, we're going. We decided today that we were going to do just live streaming with the holidays coming up, everybody going to visit their family. And uh, we wanted to make sure we try to keep everything as safe as possible. Um, we do have a couple people. Matter of fact, Sister April was in her and Lil Lizzie is uh, under the weather today themselves. Uh, they did test negative for the coronavirus, but they do have the flu, all right? Sister April does anyway. So y'all be praying for them today. And uh, that. And I just talked to Matt just a few minutes ago, and uh, he said that she was feeling some better. So uh, y'all continue to pray for them, that they will make a uh, quick and full recovery. Amen? Yeah. But like I said, with everything that's going on, we just felt that it was uh, necessary and in everybody's best interest that we do uh, live streaming only today. Uh, we did postpone our Thanksgiving dinner. We were supposed to do our Thanksgiving dinner today, uh, potluck, if you will. Uh, we postponed it. If, if the Lord willing, we'll be doing it next Sunday. Uh, so please get with um, my wife and Sister April on that, and Sister Madeline about the uh, what to bring and so forth. But we did postpone that. Uh, unless more sickness arises, someone uh, god forbid does test positive for corona we will uh, we'll keep you informed uh just another note uh we'd already had on the plans that we were not having wednesday night service due to thanksgiving as a matter of fact uh, my wife and i'll be traveling uh going up to north carolina to my son's uh fiance and uh, we're going to be having thanksgiving with them uh this year and uh, so y'all be praying for us because we'll be leaving Wednesday night after uh, my wife gets off of work and we'll be traveling up there. And uh, it's about a three hour trip, so y'all be praying for us that we'll get there safe and, and we'll have a good time with them, get to meet her side of the family for the first time. And uh, I'm looking forward to that, amen. Um, I pray everybody can hear me okay. If you, if you can't hear me, speak out. My son's here, he can, uh, he can if you can't hear me, let me know. I, pick up one of the microphones and we'll uh, we'll start looking at you know I'll start talking through the microphone if you need to but uh, before we when we had the phone right here at us uh, we didn't have to uh, have the microphones on it really didn't make much of a difference uh, but anyway just so you know if those of you that are watching live stream uh, there's something a little lighter side the the, the phone the, the camera is six feet away from me so I'm socially distanced from the phone, so you don't have to worry about anything. Uh, <laughs> so, no, I'm just cutting up a little bit this morning. But I do want us to praise the Lord today. It is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that we have uh, we have picked to come to church on the Sundays and to worship Him. But in all honesty, in all actuality, Sunday ought not be the only day we worship Him. It ought not be the only day we, we lift up our voices to Him. But why don't we right now, right where you're at in your living room, I wonder for just a moment, because there's a lot of needs out there. There's a lot of sicknesses going around. There's a lot of people testing positive for the coronavirus out in the communities. Uh, like I said, the Lord has blessed us here at Solid Rock. Uh, we've not had anyone, we've had a few scares, but we've not had anyone directly uh, that is directly related to the sanctuary here uh, test positive. So. Uh, God has been good. We've had some folks that seem to have the symptoms, but again, they go get tested and God's on our side. Amen. Amen. But why don't we, for just a moment, why don't we just lift up our hands and our voices to God and just begin to praise Him and magnify Him. Oh, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we worship You. We magnify You today, Lord. You alone are worthy to be praised. You alone are worthy to be exalted today. Lord, we come before you today, Lord. We come before your throne today, Lord. We come to lift you up, Lord, to get direction from you today, Jesus. We pray, Lord, that you would come into this place today, Lord. Touch this place today, Lord. Touch those that are watching 
uh, on Facebook today, Lord. That you would touch them and bless them today. Give them a word of encouragement today, Lord. Give us a word of guidance today and wisdom today. Lord, we magnify you, Lord. We glorify you. Lord, we pray, Lord, for those that are sick today. I pray, Lord, that you would touch their bodies, Lord, that you would remove the sicknesses from their bodies. I pray for those, Lord, that are out there that are testing positive for this virus, that are scared, that are afraid, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would bring peace to their storm, Lord, that you would touch them, Lord, those that are in hospital beds today, Lord, fighting for their life. I pray, Lord, a special blessing upon them, Lord, that you would renew their strength, Lord, bring health back to their bodies. Lord, I pray for those that are fighting other diseases, Lord, like cancer and heart disease, Lord, and other things that are bringing the body down, Lord. I pray right now, Lord, I pray against it, Lord. I plead the blood of Jesus upon every situation, Lord, people that we're in contact with. Help us, Lord, to be the church, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be witnesses, Lord. Help us, Lord, to take your authority and your anointing to the people, Lord, that are lost, that are living in a dark world right now, that seem hopeless. Help us, Lord, to shine light upon them. And, Lord, once again, we give you the glory and the praise today that you so deserve. In Jesus' precious name we pray. And everybody say amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> glory to God. Glory to God. <clears throat> I say this is a little different today, so pardon me if I stumble a little bit. I'm used to preaching to people. Uh, the only person I've got here today is my son, and uh, my wife's back home. Y'all pray for her. Her shoulder has been bothering her again, uh, but uh, she's not been able to sleep very well the past couple of nights. And uh, But uh, thank God it waited until after we got back from our vacation to, to start bothering her. Uh, so uh, I think it may have had something to do with the air mattress we slept on. We we did some tent camping this year, this past week in Sherall State Park. Some of you seen the the beautiful pictures that we were posting. Uh, it was absolutely gorgeous out there. Uh, a little chilly, and uh, the wind was blowing a little bit. So it, you know, wasn't as comfortable as I'd like to have been. Uh, but we did have a great time. Got some time to be able to spend some time together and to relax. Uh, met some folks that were uh, camping in the sites next to us and uh, they were fellow kayakers as well and we got to talking to them and become friends with them on Facebook. Maybe they're watching this morning, I'm not sure. But it is good to, it's always good to meet new people and meet new friends. Amen. But before I get into the word of the Lord, and we haven't mentioned this lately or it, it's been a while since we've mentioned this, but um, really since the last time we did just live streaming, uh, but we still have the Givelify app uh, available for those of you that are watching Facebook um, that are not able to, to join us in person. If you have a desire to give uh, your tithes, your offerings, just whatever it is you, you, you may want to contribute to our building fund, our foreign missions, um, we have those available through the Givelify app. Uh, it's a very easy process. You you go to your app store, whether it's Apple or Google Play, and um, you look up Givelify. It's G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. Givelify. And uh, you download the app to your phone, or you can go on your computer if you just want to make a one-time gift. Uh, you can a donation. You can go there and uh, go to the Givelify app. Look us up. You can look us up at Solid Rock United Pentecostal Church uh, in Hartsville, or you can uh, just you can in their search engine type in Pastor Eddie Harrington, and it should pull up pull up our church uh, uh, section. You'll see our logo. Uh, make sure you give to the right Solid Rock Church, Amen. But uh, just go on there and uh, just a few clicks away, and you'll be able to donate. You have an option there of whether you want to give it as tithes, whether you want to give it as offering or if you want to give it to the building fund or missions, uh, those app, those tabs are there. Uh, they call them folders. You can put it in whatever folder, and it distinguishes it to us. When we do the bookkeeping, we apply it to the proper uh, accounts. Amen? But just wanted to throw that out there at you. I've uh, been meaning to, over the past little bit, been meaning to remind everyone that there is a lot of the folks that are even in person are still giving through the Givelify app. It's very convenient 
uh, very easy. Uh, it, it helps. I don't have to go make a deposit. It automatically goes into the account. Uh, they do charge us a little bit for it, but uh, convenience sometimes costs. Amen? But I want to get into the Word of the Lord here today. Uh, again, we're doing things a little different back to the uh, strictly live streaming. Like I said, there's no one here. We won't have any music. You don't have to worry about me singing. Uh, I don't want to run you off, okay? Um, but I do have something that has been burning in my heart all week and uh, wasn't sure, you know, I, I, being on vacation, I've been praying and, you know, seeking the face of God, seeking His will, and this thing popped up in my in my heart this week, and, and I was thinking, well, Lord, it's pretty strong, you know, in my prayers, the, the feeling I was getting, because the reason I say that was Brother Matt was supposed to be preaching this morning, Brother Matt was going to be bringing us the word today, and uh, well, after last night, we, myself and the the, the ministry uh, began to come together, and we decided to do uh, this format today. And uh, I said, "Well, now I know why the Lord gave me what He gave me." Amen. Yeah. He always He's always talking to me. He's always giving me direction, and I'm thankful for that. But I I want to now. I don't normally do this lengthy reading, but today I got something that I want to read, and it's found in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. Uh, it's going to be the entire chapter, so please bear with me, but I want you to read along with me. Please get your Bibles out and turn with me there. Uh, don't, don't ever trust that, that someone's reading you the truth. Read it for yourself. Go home and see when you're at home or you're in person or whatever, take notes and, and write down the scriptures that we quote you and or read to you and, and go back and verify it, study it. Uh, you don't want to be deceived. In this day and this hour, you cannot afford to be deceived because we, we're, we're standing on the edge of the end of time as, as humans know it and the Lord's about to return for his church and I want everyone to be ready. Amen? But Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1, we're going to read down through verse 31. So y'all please bear with me and read with me. Um, it's the very first book of the Bible. Amen. Give everybody just a moment to turn there. It reads like this, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. It says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Now notice, and, and, and I want to point this out, because as I read this, I want you to see how many times this, is, this phrase is used in this chapter alone. He says that God saw, in verse 4 it says, God saw the light that it was good. And you're going to find the first chapter here is the, is the days of creation, the six days of creation that God created everything. And you're going to find what he has to say about his creation. Uh, in verse 5, And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God, God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together in one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters he called seas, and God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb uh, yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself, upon the earth, and it was so. Verse 12, And the earth brought forth grass, and the herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Verse 13, And the evening and the morning were the third day. 
And God said, let, the, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven uh, to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And in the evening and in the morning were the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created the whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Verse 22. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas, and let the fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and the cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Verse 26, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he them. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, in the which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Now today I want to preach on this thought. Uh, and please bear with me. I, I normally like to get my text from, or the, the, my title from the text that I read sometimes. But today I'm going to do a little different. I read fairly lengthy. I've read the entire chapter. I don't normally do that. So why not stay with the stay on course and have a title that's different from what I read. Uh, today's title, if you keep up with titles, is I Can Fix It. I Can Fix It. Let us pray one more time. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we're so thankful, Lord, for your word. Lord, we're so thankful for everything that you've done for us, the blessings, uh, how you've kept your hands upon us, Lord. You've kept uh, us away from this awful pandemic. Lord, I just pray right now that you would continue to lead us and guide us today, Lord, encourage us. And, Lord, once again, we give you the glory and praise that you so deserve. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Everybody say amen. amen. Now, the <clears throat> reason I say I can fix it is because when you stop and think of things, you, you look at it. Even uh, men, for instance, that we're the world's worst at it, I guess, and we... We go and buy something, whether it's an automobile or a motorcycle or a boat. Uh, no matter what you get, a house. Uh, the first thing you want, the first thing you can think of is what can I do to improve it? Even research and development departments across the globe, uh, they they sit down and they they take the products that is at hand and they look at them and say, how can I make this better? How can I fix this? Well, I read you Genesis to show you that God, everything God created was not only good, but it was perfect. God had everything established uh, according to 
his will and according to his purpose. And if you look, and even on the sixth day, he looked at man and he said, I have created everything for you. I have created everything so that it would be at your fingertips. Uh, you don't need of anything. Everything that you're going to need. The fowl of the air, the fish of the sea, the, 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 the living creatures that walk this earth, they have everything that they need at their fingertips. You have no need. I created everything in order so that it would be, provide, be a providing uh, factor for you. Uh, everything that man would ever need was created long before man was ever created. And, I, and I'm thinking, thank you, Jesus. Everything that I need has already been created. Everything's been put forth. And I read that to, to say, you know, I wonder why, you know, what got into Adam and Eve's head. I know temptation has its way of drawing us into things, but just a few chapters over, we find where man took what God created, perfect, uh, 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 and it was good and very good according to Genesis 1 that uh, they took it and messed it up they had the mentality well you know I believe I can fix this and from that day forward this earth mankind has been spiraling out of control uh, we look up today and we look at the technology and the conveniences and uh, you know, at the push of a button, I walked into the building today and, and it's been a little cool and I walked in and it's had a little chill in the air and I, I was able to walk over to the thermostat right here behind me and flick a switch and within just a few moments the heat's on and, and uh, you know, we think that this is better. Or is it? Mankind over the years have been bringing out new and better products. Uh, the new and improved. Uh, everything can be improved upon. I don't care what comes out today. Tomorrow there is an answer for it. There is, a, there is an improvement for it. Uh, you can go to, the, to any dealership right now, automotive dealership, and you can buy a car. If there's a car sitting on the showroom floor, you can bet your bottom dollar there's an aftermarket part out there that you can buy that you think will make it better for you. I can fix that. I, I'm part. I've, I've got, you know I've got an older truck that I've been working on, and and uh, I also have a motorcycle, and and um, my motorcycle is I bought it new a little over a year ago. And uh, I'm part of some, some forums on Facebook, some groups on Facebook. And it's amazing that, you know, guys, they buy these things, the motorcycles especially. They buy this, this brand new motorcycle. And all oh, they're in love with it. It's the best thing they've ever set on. But now I've got to go buy some stuff to improve it. <laughs> I got to go take it and have it tuned to improve the performance. I got to buy some new pipes to put on it, make it sound better. I got to get a new seat put on it because this seat just ain't as comfortable as I think it ought to be. I can fix it. I can fix it. Uh, trucks. Uh, these old trucks, I mean, they, a new vehicle, you buy a vehicle and, and, and these aftermarket parts, you can lift them, you can lower them, you can put new sound in them, you can put GPS in them, you can do all kinds of things, new lights. And, and I found over the years, although uh, it personalizes my vehicle, and, and my father was just telling my son, you know, I, I'd love to get my truck to a place where I'm buying parts to, to not just keep it on the road, but, but I want to be able to buy stuff to be able to personalize it make it my own to, to where you can others can visually see the improvements that I've made to my vehicle but I have found over the years that and I know I know I'm, I'm starting to sound older when it comes to this when I was a young man it's you got to drop it if it's two-wheel drive you got to lift it if it's a four-wheel drive you got to customize it you got to do this you got to do that but I've learned over the years, after having to fix these vehicles because of the modifications that I've done to them, 
you're better off to leave them as close to factory settings as you can possibly leave them and you'll get better service out of it. So keep that tucked in your brain there for a minute. The manufacturer manufactured, there's engineers that have went to school for years and designed these vehicles. They put a lot of thought and, and, and intent into these, into these things that we buy. Even our cameras, our phones, and our computers, and lights, and everything that's around us, there has been a research and development department that has studied and, and, and tried to come up with a way to, to produce a product that don't need fixing. Now, I want to a different subject, and please don't, don't take this wrong. I'm not, I don't ever want to get political behind the pulpit. I don't ever like to even talk about politics. But I'm, I'm, I'm bringing this subject up just for the fact of proving a point. I don't care if you're a Republican. I don't care if you're Democratic. I don't care if you're independent. I, I really don't care what beliefs you have when it comes to political positions or any position. But if you stop and think about this for a moment, every person that has ever run for some position, whether it's the student body president, whether it's the sheriff, whether it's a senator or congressman or representative, president of the United States, mayor, governor, I don't care who it is. I don't care if, you, if, you're, if you're vying for a vote and you want somebody to vote for you. I recall as a, as a, as a young man in, in, in school, the, the kids that were trying to run for, for, like I said, student body president, they would have these little debates set up. And in the debate, every single one, even as a kid, their motto or their message that they were trying to get out for their people that they wanted to support them was, I can fix it. I can make it better. I can do a better job than the previous person has done. As a matter of fact, this this you know this we just come out of an election season and there's still a lot of turmoil going on. But for the last four years, all I've heard was how bad Trump is doing. And I you know and, and they can't wait till 2020 so that they can put somebody up that can take a hold of that office that'll do a much better job. And I've even seen it, like again, I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm for or against one party or the other. Please don't take that. But I find it funny that through all the political ads and stuff, one of the things that was brought up with the, the president-elect Joe Biden is, you know, people were saying, wait a minute now, he says he can make a difference. He can change. He's been in office for 47 years. Where, what difference is he going to make now? And I've heard that not just about him, but I've heard about uh, the race with Lindsey Graham and and and, and uh, uh, Harrison. Uh, you know, Jamie Harrison. You know, and, uh, Jamie Harrison said, "Hey, Lindsey Graham ain't what he used to be. He ain't supporting our state like he should. Whether he is or not, I'm not here to debate that." But I want you to take notice that every person that ever wants your vote, whether it's for sheriff, whether it's for student uh, body president, whether it's any position, even if it's in the company, within the company that you work for, I want that position because I believe I can fix the problem. I believe that I can make an improvement. I can do a better job than the previous administration. Tell me that's not true. I can recall over the years of watching previous elections, and, and, and it doesn't matter every whether you're Republican or Democrat or Independent when it comes to politics. It does not matter. They all have the same message. I can do better. <laughs> Vote for me because I can do better. And yet, the process is still the same. We still have the same things going on. As a matter of fact, it, uh, 
According to society, things have only gotten worse. And yet we vote for each person that's going to make it better. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why things have gradually gotten worse. It's because we as people, as human beings, believe with our whole heart that we have the ability to make things better. We believe that we have the talents and the abilities and the finances and, and, and all the resources available that we can make it better. We can fix it. The problem is the solution to the problem cannot be the problem itself. Let me say that again. The solution to the problem cannot be the problem itself. Again, I'm not making a, a, a case for or against new president or the sitting president. Or, I'm here to tell you, I don't care who you vote into office. They don't have the answer. Only God has the answer. Only God can make things better. He is the original manufacturer. He is the creator of the heavens and the earth. And everything that creeps upon the face of this earth, he originally created it for our good, and he saw that it was good. But it was from the very onset that man looked upon the face of the earth and said, Hey, guess what? I can make it better. Has been the downfall to man ever since. Ever since man has fell, man has been trying to fix it. In Psalm 118, verses 8 and 9, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Psalm 37 and 5, Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. In Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 7, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. I'm here to tell you today, and I know I've, I've tickled and touched on political things, but I'm here to tell you today, Man does not have the answer to your problem. Right. I'm standing here today. I stand here as your pastor. And I'm here to tell you, I do not have the answer to your problem from me. From me. I don't have the talents and the abilities to fix your problem. But I have a God that I serve, that I work for, that I live for, that I worship. I have a God today that knows your needs. He is the original manufacturer. He knows how to reset to default settings. He knows how to take things that have been all messed up by man and straighten them out. And it is only then when we as a human race can turn to him for every thought, for our every guidance, that is only when we will see things truly get better. We know, for those of you that have been around church for a little while, understand that we're on a trajectory to, that, that's leading us to the end of time. We, I've read the back of the book. There is going to come a day when the Lord comes back and says, I'm done. He's going to come back for a church that is called by His name. He's coming back for some folks that realize, I can't fix it. He can fix it. And I must put my trust solely in Him. I stand before you today. Uh, we, we, we have we done this li uh, live streaming today uh, out of an abundance of caution for everyone that comes. There are some folks that fear this virus. And, and although we've not had this virus uh, penetrate uh, our fellowship, we are doing everything within our power to prevent it. We're taking all the measures that we can to keep from spreading not only the coronavirus, but the common flu or a common cold. We're doing everything we can. I mean, in beyond all honesty, there's probably stuff that we should be doing from the get-go. Now, I'm not in for the mask wearing thing. I mean, that's... 
you want to wear a mask to protect you from the viruses, you need to have one with charcoal filters on it. Full-blown respirator mask. These little cardboard things that you put on your face or the cotton things that you put on your face, and you may disagree with me, but guess what? You have a right to your own opinion. But I'm here to tell you today, I've known people within this fellowship of the church that have, not in our congregation, but across the uh, uh, our fellowship in other churches, that have wore their mask religiously and still got the coronavirus. I don't stand up here in fear, but we do things to protect everyone for the better good of everyone. Because uh, there are those that are outside the church to interact with us, and I don't want it to be said that, hey, uh, <laughs> we were ignorant and, and we continue to do things and continue to spread things. Um, but I understand that I serve a God that has a plan for his church. And I'm going to serve him, and I'm going to do my part. I'm going to come, and I'm going to put my trust in him. You know, there's things we do out of respect for others. You know, there's times I put a mask on out of respect for a business that I'm going into. They require it, so I go in. Still don't change how I feel about it. But at the same time, we do things out of respect. The only thing I ask is this. I respect your wishes in some cases like that, but I also ask you to respect my wishes if I decide to not wear it. We as a church, we must get back to the fundamental understanding that we do not have the answer within ourselves. We have the answer within the Word of God. We have the answer within us as far as a spirit, His spirit dwelling in us. And we must learn to lean on that and trust Him and learn to have faith in Him. The problem with society today is we always try to, uh, even I, I'm guilty of it, okay? I, I'm guilty of it. I stand here and I'll admit it. <clears throat> when problems arise within our personal lives, we try to, fix it ourselves. We try to use our own talents, our own abilities, our own connections. Who can I call to get this taken care of? Who can I call to get this part or get that or do this or do that? Who can I call to, to help out in this situation? Uh, or what can I do to help in this situation? And, and usually we exhaust, we exhaust all means that we have within our own abilities before we call upon the Lord. We must turn to him first. He is the only one that has the answer. He is the only one that can make things good again. I heard it put like this one time. I heard this saying, and I, I thought it was quite funny. Um, and it uh, seemed like sometimes uh, this could be the motto for, for my life, personally. But well, someone once said it like this, quit trying to get ahead, you're not that good. Because <laughs> it seems like every time I try to get ahead on my own accord, I take four or five steps backwards. It's only when I, it's only when I follow the, walk, the, the lead of the Lord and, and, and what he has given me and what he's uh, provided for us and I use uh, his methods is the only time I start making progress forward. With that being said, we must understand it doesn't matter what I believe or what you believe. The only thing that matters is what the Word of God says. We must base our decisions and everything that we do off the Word of God. If you're not sure about it, you need to study the Word more. If you don't know how to study, get with me or my ministry staff, and we'll be glad to sit down and go through Bible studies with you. Um, because it is of our utmost importance that you learn the Word of God for yourself, that you understand the owner's manual to your life. Speaking of owner's manuals and so forth, I've over the years I've had the distinct privilege of working in dealerships, and, and uh, I've 
course, I've owned my share of vehicles over the years, and um, I'm sure all of you have heard the term lemon law at some point in your life. If you own a vehicle and you've been having problems with it, somebody will say, hey, there's a lemon law. You bought a lemon, maybe. Um, and what that means is, and, and just so you know, the law states uh, that, you know, if you've got a, a new vehicle that's under warranty um, and you take it back to the dealership and, and they make several attempts to correct the same problem, not multiple problems. Sometimes if you have multiple problems and they're still working on different things and sometimes the manufacturer gets involved then too, but, but usually if it's like the same problem, let's say a transmission for instance, keeps going out, keep, they've replaced the transmission three times and they can't get it to do right, then it may qualify as the lemon law, under the lemon law. Under the lemon law, when something qualifies as a genuine lemon, that the manufacturer has produced a vehicle that is unfixable, then the, the manufacturer under law is obligated to buy or purchase the vehicle back. And they bring the vehicle, they take the vehicle out of circulation, the vehicle will never hit the market again. It will be, they'll probably tear it apart. I don't know exactly what happens to it other than the fact that I know that it does not be resold back into society. Not as a new vehicle or whatever under any kind of warranty. Uh, I'm sure there's, there's some loopholes where they probably sell it. I doubt they just crush it. And, but nevertheless, I, I brought this up to, to bring a point to you. And, and I'm not, I'm about to bring this to a close here in just a moment. But when you have a vehicle that uh, dealerships, mechanics can't seem to fix, can't seem to get it right, then the dealership has an obligation when the, the owner of the vehicle inquires of it, they have an obligation to contact the manufacturer and say, hey, we've got a serious problem. And, and being over a service department here a while back, I, I, there's a bunch of hoops that the dealership has to jump through before the manufacturer says, okay, we're done with it, we'll buy it back. They've got all kind of tech lines and stuff like that. They, they may even suggest taking it to another dealership just to make sure that we don't have human error going on with the repairs. But nevertheless, if the vehicle is deemed a lemon, the manufacturer will buy it back, will give you, will refund you your money back to you. I said that to say this, we as people, we're still under warranty as mankind. As long as there's breath in our body, we can be fixed. We can be repaired. And if we continue to go to the repair shops and man can't fix it, <laughs> I have a God, the manufacturer. Not only will he buy you back, he has already purchased you back. He has already died on the cross for you and I. He had, you are bought with a price. Right. The manufacturer thought way ahead. He said, listen, when man fell, man became a lemon from that day forward. There is no fixing you without my spirit. There is no fixing you. There is no man. There's no pastor. There's no Sunday school teacher. There's no uh, uh, men's minister. There's no ladies minister. There is no... Uh, youth leader. There's nobody out there that can fix you. You will always have the sin problem in your life. The only way you're going to get rid of that, to a certain degree, because even Paul said, I, I try to do good, but he was always present with me. There's a dual nature going on. But the only way you're going to overcome that is by the Spirit of God. Not by my power, not by my strength, but by the Spirit of God. Say the Lord. That is the only way you're going to overcome the sinful life. That is the only way it's going to be fixed. You can't fix it. God can fix it. That's right. He's already bought you. He's already made provision. All you got to do is return back to the manufacturer and let him reset the defaults in you. Let him get you to a place that, that he can work with you and mold you. We've got, we're the clay. He's the potter. We've got to get back on the potter's wheel and allow him to mold us and shape us. The Bible says that 
from our mother's womb, we were shaping in iniquity. The born again process, God puts us back on the potter's wheel and we're reshapen. We're reconfigured. He puts his accessories on it, if you will. He personalizes it so that when people see you and you're a blood-bought believer, born-again believer, people see you and say, hey, that person belongs to Jesus. I can tell because look at the characteristics. Look at the, just like if I drive my vehicle down the road and they look at me, uh, it's like my motorcycle, for instance, I can roll past anybody that's ever owned a motorcycle. They know right off the bat, he put aftermarket parts on that vehicle. Look at that. There, there's, there's an exhaust pipe down. He, that didn't come factory. They know it because they can hear it. They can see it. <laughs> when you are a born-again, blood-bought saint of God, people will know it. They will see it. They will hear it. They will feel it. We must understand and get this in our head. I cannot fix it. Only God can. We're living in a day and an hour where everybody has an answer for our problems. Everybody has a solution for what's going on. Everybody has their opinions about everything. Like I said, I give you my opinion. Model. It's my opinion. On face mask. You have your opinions on yours. There are people who have opinions about holidays and stuff like that. That's your opinion. And when it comes to the Bible or talking about church in general, you will find I don't sit down and give you opinions about the Bible. Um, you know, you, you may try to clarify things, but I only talk to you about the Bible with the Bible. I had someone years ago, and I'm about to close. A gentleman worked for me at a, at a place of business that I was a manager at, and the, there were some subjects that come up about Christianity and living for God and so forth, and there were some differences of opinions that come up. And again, it was some differences of opinions amongst not with myself, or, but some customers that were in there. When the customers left, uh, the gentleman that worked for me, he looked at me, he said, that's why I don't talk religion. He said, because, he said, man, he said, because, hey, I don't know what I'm talking about, first of all, foremost. I said, man, you said a mouthful right there. He said, what do you mean? I said, first and foremost, if you want to sit down and talk religion with anybody, you better sit down and talk with the Bible, not by your opinions. I said, that's why I like to sit down and have Bible studies. That way we can study the Bible for itself. I can sit here and tell you all day long, I think you ought to wear pink polka dotted pajamas and jump off the roof three times a day and thou shalt be saved. They don't say that in the word of God. But I can sit here and tell you that, that would be my opinion. But, in, but unless I get into the word of God and back it up with scripture, it's just my opinion. But if I get in the word of God and I show you scripture after scripture after scripture on how to be saved and how to live for God, then I've done my duty in sharing with you what the Word of God says, not what I say. Because remember, my words, and here's the difference, my words tear down, my words offend, my words hurt, my words destroy, okay? And I'm a man of God. I've been preaching for 24 years. You know, I, I, you have a bad mood and you, you snap at somebody, you tear them down. But God's word will never tear you down. God's word will never stray you, uh, steer you astray. God's word will never uh, uh, destroy you. God's word will never down you. God's word will never offend you. If it offends you, you're on the wrong side of the fence. But God's word does not offend. God's word loves. It builds up. God's word uh, edifies. God's word puts back things, puts things back together that was once torn down by man's words I can't fix it but God is saying today and hence the title of my message Jesus is looking at you today and he's saying I can fix it 
unlike politicians or anybody searching for votes, <clears throat> whether you vote for Jesus or not, he's still King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's already, he, uh, there is no election for him. He's already ruler, a supreme ruler of the universe. He's already, he reigns in his majesty. He doesn't need your approval to be in office. He doesn't need your approval to sit on the throne. He just does. But he does need your approval to sit on the throne of your heart. And I challenge you today, if you're, if you're listening to me for the first time or, or you're contemplating going to church, hear me. Jesus can make it better. He can kick the old administration out of your heart and put a new heart. He can bring in his administration. And I promise you, there won't be a day goes by that you'll regret it. He loves you, and he wants to be here for you. And I want you to know that we as a church body, we're here for you. I'm not sitting here asking you to let me be better for you. I'm not going to sit here and tell you I'm going to be better than your former pastor or the pastor that you have now. I'm just here to tell you I know a God that's, that's, that's creator of the universe. If you follow me, I'll, I promise you I'll lead you to him. I'm going to follow his direction. If you ever need me, all you got to do is call me, text me, message me. I've got, I try to have every source of communication open to you guys. Before we go, before I dismiss, I, I want for just a moment, I feel this in the Holy Ghost. I wonder if where you're, where you're at, if you're in your living room, your bedroom, wherever you're watching this at, some of you may be watching this at a later date. Because this will be posted on our, our Facebook page. It will be on YouTube and our um, website. If you're not sure about our website, our website's www.srcupc.com. That's srcupc.com. It'll be under the media tab. Uh, SRC's for Solid Rock Church. UPC's for United Pentecostal Church. Uh, so y'all please... But I, where you're at, I, I, I ask you if you would just stand with me right where in your living room, in your bedroom, please stand. And I want you to just, just for a moment here, if you just maybe slip a hand in the air, close your eyes. You're in the privacy of your own home right now. You can worship however you want. You don't, if you've ever been in a position where you might be embarrassed by how you worship or sometimes you think, man, I just love to be able to just worship openly. Here's your opportunity. I wonder for just a moment if you just cry out to Jesus as I pray before we dismiss. I wonder if you would just, just for a moment, God, please pray with me, would you please? In the name of Jesus, Lord, we stand before you today, Lord. We come before your throne today, Lord, pleading, Lord. We know you have the answers. We know you can fix the mess that we've gotten ourselves into. Lord, we know that you're able to, to right the wrongs. We know, Lord, that you're able to, to, to mend broken hearts, mend broken marriages. Lord, we know you're able to put friendships back together. We know you're able to put families back together, Lord. Lord, we know you're able to heal the body, Lord, that is suffering from sicknesses. Lord, we know you're able, Lord. You created this body and you saw that it was very good. Lord, we're praying right now, Lord. As your servants, as your followers today, help us, Lord, to get back to that state where you look down upon your people and see that it is very good once again. Lord, I pray right now, Lord, that you would touch each and every soul that is watching here today, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would move upon them, Lord Jesus. Uh, touch their hearts, their minds, Lord. Break down any walls that may be barriers, Lord, for you. God, I pray that you would remove the chains right now that have got them bound. Remove the shackles from their feet that they may be able to dance in your presence, Lord. Oh, God, help us today, Lord. Help us today, oh, God. 
We can't fix this situation, but you can. You have the answers. Oh, God, touch our hearts and our minds once again. Speak to us, oh God, and move upon us, Lord. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise now. <laughs> hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you. Glory to God. Glory to God. I mentioned earlier, I've been standing behind a pulpit for 24 years preaching this glorious gospel, and not one day have I ever regretted it. I'm here to tell you today, give the Lord a try. Give him an opportunity to, to change your life and see what the Lord has in store for you. If you ever have any questions, any doubts, please feel free to call me. Me and my wife, my ministerial staff, brother, sister, uh, Spigner, Matt and April Spigner, they'd be glad to sit down with you, Natalie and John and my son, uh, several people in this church, they'd be glad to sit down with you and Bible study with you, whomever you may feel comfortable with. I love every one of you. I appreciate you. I apologize for any inconveniences this week that uh, was having to do services this way this week. Uh, pray everybody will pray this week. Uh, go see your family and uh, go there with a spirit of anointing upon you from the Spirit of God and, and be a witness. Tell your family what you're thankful for. Let them know that you serve a living, loving God. Hallelujah. Amen. Love every one of you. Appreciate you. Hope you have a safe and wonderful week. I hope you have a great Thanksgiving. Don't eat too much. Um, if you have any leftovers, call me. My son and I will be glad to come over and help clean those up for you. Amen. Lord bless you. Love you. Have a great day.